The Idaho House struck down a bill that would have ended child marriage. They voted against it. Under current Idaho law, 16 and 17 year olds just need a parental consent to marry. A child under age 16 can marry if a judge consents also, which is fucking absurd. This is literally child grooming. There is no child that can understand like the ramifications of marrying an adult. Like if these fucking lunatics think that, you know, a child can't understand basic sociological concepts like the difference between gender and sex and understand their gender identity to contradict predict their birth sex, they certainly can't understand the ramifications of marrying a f***ing adult. Are you insane? So for those of you who haven't been paying attention, the midterms in the United States are going to be coming up in November. This means that the House of Representatives and the Senate are going to be trying to get new people in there or keep the ones that are already in there in layman's terms. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on around that. People are campaigning, people want to do certain things, make certain policies go through, change the world for better or for worse, depending on which side of the political aisle you seem to fall on. Uh, you might think the opposition obviously is always doing the bad thing, but I think in this case, morally, you know, the left has kind of got the upper hand and the reason is very simple. So essentially, Republicans currently are through their usual culture war talking points where they never try to address anything substantive to make people's lives better through policy are instead talking about, you know, fear and disgust and trying to weaponize people's fear and disgust to vote for them so that they continue to give tax breaks to wealthy billionaires and corporations and continue to shaft the little guy as they always have. That is the entire Republican agenda. But their agenda also includes weaponizing the humanity of LGBTQIA plus people, just queer people in general, to drum up votes for those midterm elections, and they will, as they always have, inspire hate crimes and lives will continue to be lost. I've said it once and I've said it a million times, to be neutral or quiet in this moment in the face of all of this bigotry and targeted violence, political and otherwise, that the Republicans are advocating for is to take the side of the bloodshed. If you haven't yet been vocal, tried to act, you can talk to your representatives, you can try to organize locally for protests, mutual aid, you can try to help out trans and queer people get to a better state potentially there's a whole bunch of different things you could do if you haven't at least been vocally in support of the humanity of queer people you're on the side of the bloodshed and you might want to think about that a little bit i've got a video about it the right wing civil rights ladder dilemma as i like to call it link will be in the top right there in the description or whatever else it's very important especially to me as a person in the LGBTQI plus spectrum. But also, even if I wasn't because I have empathy for my fellow human beings and want to see them live their best lives, I would still care about it, and you should too. And Tucker Carlson is a very popular right-wing commentator on Fox News. is the most popular Fox News show and news show in general on TV. Very influential guy. And recently... Media Matters unearthed new audio from the Bubba the Love Sponge show where previously Tucker Carlson said a lot of colorful things, especially as it pertains to black and brown people. But this is a different beat. Uh, I'm sure he still doesn't like black and brown people, but in this case, it's about women and young girls. On Earth, audio Tucker Carlson makes numerous misogynistic and perverted comments. Between 2006 and 2011, Tucker Carlson spent approximately an hour a week calling into Bubba the Love Sponge, a popular shock jock radio program where he spoke with the host about a variety of cultural and political topics and sometimes vulgar terms. You know, it, it is what it is. We can go into all of the quotations, but we might as well just hear it straight from uh, the cuck's mouth, as it were. So here's Cucker Tarlson being a little sus, let's say. Uh, potential content warning for people who have uh, sensibilities to this kind of thing. Well, actually, he's not in prison for that. He didn't warn Jeff didn't marry underage girls. No, he, he's, in, he's in prison for facilitation of child... Whatever the hell that means. That means he's that... In prison. He's in prison because that, he's weird and unpopular, no. and he has a different <laughs> lifestyle that other people find creepy. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he says that he has a different lifestyle that people find creepy when he is literally convicted and went to prison for the facilitation of child rape. What are you talking about? Well, let's continue. Accessory to the rape of children. That is a felony and a serious one at that. What do you mean an accessory? He's like got some weird religious cult where he thinks it's okay to, you know, marry underage girls, but he didn't do it. Why wouldn't the guy who actually did it, who had sex with an underage girl, he should be the one who's doing what? life. Wait, we're talking about marriage, not, you know, sex necessarily. But I guess, of course, as soon as conservatives start thinking of children, they think of sex. This has been entirely evident in all of the dialogue and culture war about, you know, LGBT kids. But let's continue. The 
ra- the, the rapist in this case has made a lifelong commitment to live and take care of the person. So I, it is a little different. I mean, let's just be honest about it. So this is the ostensibly anti-child grooming side of the fence. Tucker Carlson is going so far as to excuse a person who has been convicted of the facilitation of child rape and has done apologia saying that, quote, he's made a lifelong commitment to live and take care of the person. This is the anti-groomer side of the ideological fence, the right wing. Sure thing, man. He's not accused of touching anybody. He is accused of facilitating a marriage between a 16-year-old girl and a 27-year-old man. You know what's what's interesting about that, too? Is that that's still bad, you fucking creep. What are you talking about? (laughs) It's still bad. If a left-wing person did the same thing, he would be up in arms about it. He'd be so excited to talk about it. But in this case, oh no, it's it's a person, he's religious, he's got different sensibilities, he's got a different lifestyle, people find it weird, believe me. You know, like, I... I, I... It's but not good. The it's not good. What they're calling felony. I know, but in, in our state, that's bullshit. But I'm tough, sorry. Now, this, tough, this guy may be a tough, 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 maybe a tough, love, but yeah. I'm just telling you I that arranging love, a marriage between a 16-year-old and a 27-year-old is not the same not as tough. pulling a stranger off the street and whipping her. That's but, bullshit. But, so he's trying to do the, oh, it's just semantics. I'm just saying that the charge is incorrect because semantics and the context. and it's He's still doing apologia for child marriage child grooming, and you would imagine this would also lead to child rape. Because, like, it, when when people get married, it is often the case that they engage in sexual engagement. If the person is a child, they can't consent. That's what's gonna happen. Anyway. Pointing out the hypocrisies of people like Tucker Carlson or any right-winger in general really doesn't mean a whole lot and doesn't really do a whole lot. The reason for this is because conservatism as an ideology is built on a foundation of a myriad of fundamental contradictions that they can't reconcile because it's impossible to reconcile. They are hypocrites by default by the ideology that they subscribe to. So calling that out doesn't really do anything because it's like, yeah, Of course, the right wing is hypocrites. That's the entire point. And the reason why they do this is because they live in an alternate reality. They don't like social progressive change because for one thing, it makes people live better, more fulfilled lives, and they want to continue to oppress people that they're scared of or find disgusting. It also, you know, social progressivism also makes it harder for them to groom children or do apologia for people doing that. So that's also another negative for the right wingers. So instead of trying to reconcile why they have these contradictions and why their ideas Theology is so nonsensical, they instead try to force their warped version of reality onto everybody else. They understand that they have these weird delusional ideas, and instead of trying to not have those ideas anymore by actually using facts and logic to figure it out, they instead try to force those ideas and delusions onto other people as a means to normalize it and make themselves feel more normal as a result. This is why they do this. And it's curious because the talking point currently from right wingers is so if you're a parent or a teacher and you affirm the gender identity of a child, you're a groomer, you know, you're a pedophile or whatever else, whatever accusations they're going to make. This has been the line that they've been saying. It is a culture war talking point that actually delegitimizes actual cases of child grooming and assault, which they seem to be participating in or doing apologia for to begin with. So maybe that's an unintended good benefit for them, that it makes it harder to actually see and get justice for the actual cases of these things happening. For instance, there have been organizations whose goal is to mitigate child trafficking and bring the people doing that to justice and to save children and protect children that have actually reached out to QAnon supporters and essentially told them to fuck off because they're making their job harder. These people make fixing these problems harder, even though they pretend to be against it. But they're doing this for votes. They're doing this because it's easier for them because they have no policy that actually helps everyday Americans. They instead have to use fear and disgust to get people to vote for them and the trans people and gay people and queer people in general are just the people they're using to do that. So it's a couple days later since the recording of the video you're watching right now, and I wanted to add this to it because it was just brought to my attention. Apparently, Tucker Carlson, who, as we saw earlier in the video, was literally doing child apologia on the Bubba the Love Sponge radio show, his April 8th edition of Tucker Carlson Tonight, he calls on men to storm into schools and, quote, thrash the teacher. Let's see what's up here. I don't understand where the men are. Like, where are the dads? I mean, where are the men? I I don't see any on this program right here. Because real men don't advocate for harm to children like Tucker Carlson does. You know, some teachers pushing sex values on your third grader? Why don't you go in there and thrash the teacher? Like, this is an agent of the government 
pushing someone else's values on your kid. Yeah, an agent of the government. You know what's funny about that is that this fucking stupid clown advocates for private schools and homeschooling, I imagine, which are literally ripe with indoctrination and child abuse. You understand that, right? Like the reason why right wingers push private schools and homeschooling is so that the parents and private school teachers can indoctrinate their kids usually to religious fundamentalism and then along with that social conservatism. That's that's why they do that. They are in the business of grooming children. They always have been. All conservatives want to do this because to be a conservative is to want to keep the status quo in place. And to be a conservative nowadays, and I guess it always has been, is to want to go back to when black people didn't have rights, women didn't have rights, gay people didn't have equality or rights, you know? That's what they want to do. And in order to continue and propagate that, they have to indoctrinate kids into unlearning or just not learning the the socially progressive values that society in the United States by and large is kind of accepted. You know, the gay people exist and that's okay. Gay marriage was legalized in 2015. Trans acceptance is going up as well. They want to go back to the point that that wasn't the case. The reason they got that to stay the case then was also through indoctrination, rewriting history and propaganda. This is just the next step because they're losing the culture war. They're losing the social war about sex, like, wh where's the pushback? Well, one of the crazy things we know, Tucker, is that this is hidden from parents. I mean, I agree with you. There's one of the other crazy things we know, by the way, data literally supports that sex ed, even completely very simplified versions of it for kids, makes rates of child abuse go down. This is part of the reason as well why conservatives want to keep kids in the dark in that way. So that because conservatives are, by and large, it would seem more likely to abuse their kids not just sexually, but emotionally, physically. They want to make it so that they can get away with it. And they realize the data suggests that if kids actually understand that they're being abused, they're more likely to do something about it. They're more likely to talk to a teacher or the police about it, another family member, and try to rescue them from that situation. They want to make that the least possible as possible. They want to abuse kids. This is the conservative MO. It's not even just sexual abuse. It's not like, oh, cons all conservatives are child sexual abusers. It's just child abuse in general as well. Emotional abuse, physical abuse. These are the kinds of people that think spanking is okay, even though the data suggests that it's not and actually just harms the child. Like it, it's the entire right wing ideology logically extends to the abuse of kids should be a ton of pushback. I'm a father of three young kids, and I would get enraged if I found out this was happening at my kid's school. But you hear all these crazy things about, you know, five-year-old kids go into school as boys, but then they go into the magical closet and they come out as, a, as their gender-affirming uh, identity. Of course, that has nothing to do with the crazy lunatic who's pushing this, them on them, of course. They're making things up, by the way. This is completely made up. This does not happen. The fact that there might be a kid who has some questions about their gender identity, and then they learn that trans people exist. That's not indoctrination, that's just learning information, that's just education. And that's also not grooming or kids being forced to be trans. If the kid is trans, but they don't know what being trans is, they might be less likely to identify as trans and then try to seek help from authority figures like parents or teachers in order to address those issues that they see within themselves. However, if they learn that trans people exist, they're more likely to understand that they might be trans and then talk to their parents or teachers about it and try to go through the process of potentially talking to medical and mental health professionals to try to assess the whole situation, see if the kid is trans or if they're just gender not conforming or yada yada yada, and then go through the whole rigmarole of very, very difficult to access processes behind transitioning and figure it all out. These fucking ludicrous ghouls want to make it so that people stay in the closet. That's the entire point. So they'll also talk about, oh, these irreparable changes to a life, these major changes to a kid's life when it comes to puberty blockers or hormones. First of all, puberty blockers have been shown to be completely reversible. Puberty blockers have also been used for cis people. When it comes to kids going through puberty way too fucking early, they will get put on puberty blockers so that they can have a later puberty that's more in line with the standard expectation and is better for their bodies. But even then, they're completely reversible. And when it comes to hormones, it's the same idea. 
The reason why the right wing doesn't want those things to be accessible is because they want to force people to go through the wrong puberty so that people are more visibly trans and in that way can be easily oppressed. I posted about this today. Transphobes aren't against HRT and puberty blockers for some imagined health or life concerns. They just want to make sure people are visibly identifiable as trans to facilitate oppression. And this is absolutely true. Whenever they say, oh, we can always tell, we can always tell. Well, first of all, no, you can't because you're fucking stupid. Um... I can get you a fun example of that, too. So here you go, the, the quote-unquote, we can always tell. Yes, I mean, look at me, they're talking about trans issues here. Okay, but the question is about women, and not about dressed up men. Hashtag not a woman. Male bone structure, nothing feminine about that. Even ugly people can look good with an entire industry caked onto one face. If you have a dick and balls, you are a dude with gender dysphoria, blah, blah, blah. Bone structure is a dead giveaway, blah, blah. You know, the funny thing about this, this is fucking Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver, however the fuck you pronounce this shit. It's, she's a cis woman and a popular actress. <laughs> she just happens happens to have a strong bone structure in her face. But the idea that, oh, we can always tell, that's not a, a, a statement of how they engage with trans people and they can always tell that somebody is trans. That's a statement of intent. The idea behind limiting people's access to HRT and puberty blockers is to make it so that, yes, they can always tell. Because when people go through the wrong puberty, usually this is targeted at trans women as well. If you go through an AMAB puberty, there's going to be a variety of physiological changes that happen to your body that make it so that it's harder to quote unquote pass as a woman. They want to make it so that they can quote unquote always tell so that they can oppress the trans women so they can easily identify them and then usually hate crime them. We're led to believe, of course, it's all coming from five-year-old children. So, so one of the things we're learning, Tucker, is that this is being forced by some of these really radical teachers, and they're hiding it from the parents. That's maybe the most no. pernicious part. It's not being forced. Literally, it is basic biology. It is basic sociology that you don't understand because you've had to delude yourself into this warped reality because you're scared of people that are different than you because you're a fucking pussy bitch coward. Fuck off. Like, if you don't understand basic biology, do you, but don't fucking force your shit on our children. What is wrong with you? Not acceptable. J.D. Vance, running for Senate in the state of Ohio. Primary is next month, I think. Oh, this, this person's a literally, like, terminally online Twitter user, is he not? Fucking moron. Anyway. Another one of these degenerates that has decided to do this is Marjorie Taylor Greene. We've talked about Marjorie Taylor Greene on the program before. There's a video that I put out called Marjorie Taylor Greene is a danger to children, and she is, that you could look at as well. She goes on her Twitter. She says, quote, there is a line in the sand, either you're a pro-profile and pro-transgender biological men, or you defend children and women, period. There's no other option, which is just flagrant bigotry with no basis in reality, just baseless accusations from a sitting congressperson. The reason why they're throwing these accusations around is because in society, pedophiles and child groomers, anybody convicted of any kind of action against a child, like violence or whatever else, is seen as less than human. There's the old trope of like, oh, these people that commit these acts and are convicted of it in jail, they don't last very long because even the people in jail don't like them and they do something about it, right? So it's essentially a means of dehumanization when these accusations are always fallacious so that when it comes time for them to advocate violence against against the people they don't like, that they're smearing with these terms, it makes it so that the broader population is like, oh, no, it's okay that they're advocating violence, being violent, etc., etc., because these people are subhuman. This is the same way they tried to keep chattel slavery of black people in place by using the N-word and other rhetoric when it comes to dehumanizing black people to make it so that even people that aren't overtly bigoted like they are kind of go along with it, you know what I mean? Dehumanization is a very, very common thing that fascist right-wingers, etc., will do in order to excuse or provide cover for the heinous shit that they do. Also, yes, Keffels did ratio a sitting congressperson, so that was pretty pog champ. Some may say poggers, even. But what's funny about this, so... Marjorie Taylor Greene recently added Jimmy Kimmel in ABC, claiming that Jimmy Kimmel did a threat of violence against her on one of his segments. Now, Jimmy Kimmel, one of the least funny people on the planet, much less the United States. I don't know how anybody watches this program. It, like, the fact that he's got a viewership at all is essentially a participation trophy. But anyway, let, let's let's hear what threat of violence there was to Marjorie Taylor Greene from, from Jimmy Kimmel that are uh, in the house, like Marjorie Taylor Greene. This woman, Klan mom, is especially upset <laughs> with the three Republican senators who said they'll vote yes on Judge Ketanji Brown-Jackson, who's... 
nominated for the Supreme Court, she tweeted, Murkowski, Collins, and Romney are pro-pedophile. They just voted for KBJ. Like, those are people in her own party as well. Those are Republicans. That's the party she's a part of. Like, it's not just limited, apparently, to, uh, to lefties, you know? Wow, where is Will Smith when you really need him, huh? <laughs> Lamau. So essentially, the threat of violence was him saying, where is Will Smith when you need him? So if you've been living under a rock, and good for you if you haven't heard of this story before because it's been plastered all over everybody's eyeballs, during the Oscars, which I didn't even know was happening until I started seeing this clip on Twitter, Will Smith smacked Chris Rock because Chris Rock was making fun of his wife. It is what it is. Who cares? The idea is like, oh, somebody should slap Marjorie Taylor Greene for literally baselessly calling people pedophiles, for smearing the entirety of the LGBTQIA plus community everybody within it as miles as well delegitimizing the terms that she's using and making it harder for actual justice to come from the people who are actually rightfully accused and convicted of these crimes he says oh why didn't somebody slap this person you could argue if you're a liberal that that's in poor taste and you know advocating you know even a mild amount of ingest violence against women not a good look sweaty we understand this but to say that it's a threat of violence so much so that you need to file a complaint with the capitol police is ludicrous ludicrous and hilarious because these are the people that call lefties snowflakes for jokes. You sensitive lefties, unlike you, I'm not easily offended, except for when a stupid ass, boring, unfunny late night talk show host makes a really dumb joke about a popular event that happened. Like, no, I wrote Marjorie Taylor Greene literally went on Alex Jones's show to advocate violence against trans people, but a Will Smith slap joke from limp dick Jimmy Kimmel is too far. Lamau, sure thing, KK Karen. And that's what she's doing. This is Karen behavior. She's trying to call the manager of ABC and try to make something happen here. Very silly. And she did go on Alex Jones's show to advocate violence, but we'll get into that. So after this happens, she goes on noted sitting congressman who is currently being federally investigated for the trafficking of a minor, Matt Gates's show, to talk about it. By the way, Jimmy Kimmel, not only would Marjorie Taylor Greene's husband make quick work of you, Marjorie Taylor Greene would make quick work of you. And if you don't believe that, you can go ask the Marines that did pull-ups with her at the Iowa State Fair. And uh, my guess is that Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel would not last too long. If, uh, if, if he himself were interested in engaging in unprovoked, terrible violence uh, against, uh, against this congresswoman. What a fucking soy cuck. Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, it is true. His foundation is not color matched properly to his skin. This man is very orange. I dare say more orange than Trump. It's, it's not very good. But it is probably true, by the way. Jimmy Kimmel probably would get the shit kicked out of him by Marjorie Taylor Greene. I don't disagree with that. But what's intensely funny to me is that Marjorie Taylor Greene is out here talking about, oh my God, protect the children, protect the children. All the gays out there, they're perverting our children, blah, 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 blah. They're indoctrinating our kids. The schools are indoctrinating our kids by teaching them basic biological and sociological concepts in an incredibly sterile and clinical context. And it's funny. So, so literally, it, it's, it's this meme. Marjorie Taylor Greene be like, can't stand files. 10 minutes later, me and the bestie. Literally. Literally. Look, how do you do this? I don't understand. Like, it, they're playing in your face. This is the most flagrant fucking hypocrisy you could ever see. This man is literally being investigated by the federal government for the trafficking of a minor. One of his, uh, his compatriots has confessed to what was accused. In a confession letter, Matt Gaetz's friend claims that the embattled congressman paid for sex with a minor. There are many other outlets reporting on this. The New York Post notes that the Justice Department had reportedly been investigating whether Gates, 38, paid a 17-year-old for sex and enticed her to travel, which would violate federal sex trafficking laws. The entire worldview of Marjorie Taylor Greene as a QAnon supporter is literally like, save the children, save the children, stop child trafficking. You know, liberals are uh, in a, a, a pedophile global cabal. They're vampires. They're trying to eat your kids, like fetuses and whatever. Like, And here you are with somebody literally being investigated by the state for that but like i say hypocrisy means nothing to these people we got another continuation of her deranged ramblings as well now that uh matt gates is done soying about the thought of watching marjorie taylor green fight jimmy kimmel 
and they go and do it. Yeah, and Jimmy, Jimmy knows it happens, and totally. you know, and and so Matt, I'm really grateful for you um, as as in your character and and as a man that would stand up and defend me as a woman because we need to recognize that women are the the weaker sex. And she said this before too. She was doing some kind of a talk, and it was about the whole oh you know trans women are actually biological men, blah blah blah. She goes on to say that they are the weaker sex as well there too, which is like I don't know, man. These people really like to shit on liberal progressives and socially progressive people. When if it wasn't for those people, if it wasn't for the advocacy of feminists, she would not be a sitting congressperson right now. She would not be in the position she's in right now if it wasn't for left wing socially progressive advocates. This is also to say that if the right wing can solidify the anti trans legislation that they're trying to push through and the anti gay legislation, women are not safe either. Even cis women, you're not safe either from the right wing. And they're still doing that. They're still trying to attack Roe v. Wade. They're still trying to attack a woman's right to an abortion, which is a bodily autonomy argument. So, like, I don't know what it is with these conservative right-wing women. They seem to have, like, a very profound, strong submission kink, and they just don't know how to interpret it or, like, process that idea because they see it as degenerate. So they try to force it on literally every other woman in society as a means to make themselves feel normal, like I was saying before. And it's really weird. Like, if you understood that you had a kink like this, you'd probably be way better off instead of being weird as hell like you are right now. But while Marjorie Taylor Greene is crying about a threat of violence from limp dick Jimmy Kimmel, she did actually go on Alex Jones's show to advocate violence against trans people. I've covered this before in a previous video, but she went on the show essentially to say that if a trans woman was the camp counselor for her kids at a camp and they happen to sleep in the same room, the same vicinity as her kids, her husband would beat the shit out of them essentially, I'm paraphrasing, which is a direct advocacy for violence against trans people because what they're citing here, like I say, I go into it also in the debunking Matt Walsh's demonic pro-abuse arguments video, which you could also get a link to. I've talked about this stuff a lot. It's a lot to take in. I'm trying to be brief with it here for this one. It was like, it was nothing at all. None of the parents in that camp where there was a, a apparently a non-binary person that was sleeping in the same room or cabin as the kids, as would often be the case for a camp counselor to do, there was no parent of the children there that accused anybody of any crime. They only said that they wish they were told that there was a non-binary or trans camp council. That's it. That was the extent of the accusation. But the right wing is running with it as if it was more than that. So this is obviously connected. This is what Matt Gates is referencing. The person being investigated for child trafficking is saying here, this is what he's referencing as well. To continue on this line of thought, the idea of this multi-pronged attack on literally every oppressed group that we're seeing today, the attacks on trans people, the broader LGBTQI plus community, specifically gay people, the attacks on women when it comes to Roe v. Wade, the attacks on black and brown people when it comes to CRT and all that, this multi-pronged approach of literally every single ladder of the right-wing civil rights ladder dilemma, shortly after going on Alex Jones's show and advocating violence against trans people, she also appeared at the America First Political Action Conference with literally neo-nazi nick fuentes is literally a neo-nazi holocaust denier very very big fan of hitler literally went there and embraced him and provided a speech to his white supremacist following absurd these are the kind of people that we're dealing with here and it's already happening the violence that is going to be expected to be seen unfortunately is not new first of all Anytime the right wing ramps up their culture war against any marginalized and powerless group, hate crimes skyrocket because the people that follow these politicians act upon the things that the politicians say. So this is a new article from April 6th, 2022. New York City LGBTQ bar set ablaze in arson attack. The recently opened Brooklyn venue Rash Bar had quickly became a fixture in the city's queer nightlife scene. A bar serving LGBTQ New Yorkers is closed after an arson attack over the weekend, the New York City Police Department confirmed Wednesday. At approximately 9 p.m. on Sunday, a man walked into the Rash Bar in Brooklyn's Bushwick neighborhood with a bottle of flammable liquid, poured it on the bar's floor, lit a match, and set the venue ablaze, according to the NYPD. Police said the suspect fled as the bar became engulfed in flames. Jake Zillin, one of the bar's owners, told NBC News on Wednesday that they are still in shock. It's so hard to believe in process said Cillin, 26, who is non-binary and uses they-them pronouns, it's more confusing than anything. Three people, a bartender, DJ, and security guard, were inside when the venue was set on fire. A 25-year-old female was transported to nearby Wyckoff Heights Medical Center with minor burns, while another victim was evaluated on the scene for minor burns to the shoulders, the NYPD said. Claire Bendiner, a co-owner of Rash, just stepped outside when the fire broke out. Everyone rushed out, Bendiner told NBC New York, the side door has a glass front, and I looked over and saw flames at the top of the ceiling. It was crazy. It happened so fast. The bar was left unrecognizable and torched, NBC New York reported. Bendiner, who used they them pronouns said the su i don't know why they keep saying this <laughs> okay i get it said the suspect boldly left behind evidence I, I, that's better than misgendering i guess i don't know <laughs> okay. 
He left the gas canister inside, kind of calmly placed it on the bar counter, wasn't knocked over anything, they told NBC New York. Police are reviewing surveillance footage that shows someone filling up a gas can minutes before the fire. So we don't know who is the suspect here. We don't know what their motivations are. But if this bar is well known to be an LGBTQ bar, it's not really a hop, skip, and a jump to speculate that it might be motivated by hate. Now, we don't know that yet, so if news comes that it was just a completely random act of violence, then I will amend this. But as far as I can tell, if you just wanted to commit arson willy-nilly, you could probably just do that to any place. The fact that you would target specifically an LGBTQ bar, of which is the minority of bars, I would imagine, like not every bar is having a focus on LGBTQ, it makes sense. And I guess we'll find out more in the future. So this is a well-understood consequence of the rhetoric of right-wing people. And this is like even a more minor form of it because a lot there have been murders that have happened. The right-wing has been credited by the Christchurch shooter. A variety of mass shooters have credited right-wingers like Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, Lauren Southern for inspiring them to do the violent acts that they do. This is nothing new and it will continue to happen. And because of this, and because of literally everything else surrounding the culture war narrative the right is pushing, I, on the Trans Day of Visibility, posted this. I'd like to stress the importance of self-defense training. Conservatives are weaponizing the humanity of trans people for votes and attempting to legislate abuse against us. Being capable of defending oneself against potential violence is paramount. General self-defense and first aid training are key. Notice the first aid training. Self-defense is good, but first aid training is also necessary. Now, in my view, literally everybody should be trained in first aid because you never know when you're going to need it. But especially if you seem to think that you're going to be at a higher probability of being met with violence on the basis of immutable characteristics about your identity, which is more and more likely as the right wing weaponizes the humanity of queer people for votes. In the United States, you have a right to firearms, but not everybody is comfortable with this option. Pepper spray, stun guns, etc. are alternatives. Non-lethals are also fine. In theory, a person who's concealed carrying, you'd probably be also carrying some non lethal option as well. Consistent training in these is one of the key elements to maximize your survival, and this is true. You cannot just simply get any of these implements. You have to consistently train in their use. A tool is only as good or as effective as much as the person knows how to use it. Very important that you get some kind of training with it. Now, not everybody is responsible enough to use a firearm. I understand this. Not everybody likes the idea. When you do concealed carry, you have a massive, massive responsibility placed on you. It's like what Spider-Man said, with great power comes great responsibility. If you're concealed carrying, you have to understand that you have deadly force now with you on your person, and it is incumbent on you to de-escalate every single confrontation as much as you possibly can. That is paramount. You cannot get away from that. It is a massive amount of responsibility responsibility and not everybody is comfortable with that. Not everybody wants to do that and I understand this which is why there are non-lethal alternatives available as well as well as general self-defense when it comes to close quarters combat standard things like that. It's very, very important you do this. And this is not limited to just physical stuff. In my view, self-defense can also be extended to how you engage with the internet. A massive, massive strategy used and tactic used by right-wingers, especially against trans women, is doxing, is leaking of information, is targeting friends and family members, doxing them, threatening them, as a means to silence an outspoken trans person or any other oppressed minority. This has happened to many, many people. There are things you could do to prevent against this as well. When it comes to keeping your address safe, there's a variety of things. It's a very, very, very long process. State by state, there will likely be, hopefully, a way for you to protect your address when it comes to government documents you sign and stuff like this. In certain states, it's possible for people to find your personal information simply by paying money and requesting the government to give it to them, which is weird. Uh, also under your voter registration, your address is also listed on there. You have to be careful about that. There are states that have protections for those kinds of things, so you should look into that as well. When it comes to your accounts on the internet, you should be using very strong passwords. I advocate the use of password managers. These are applications that keep all your passwords in a safe, secure thing behind another password or a variety of two-factor keys and all this kind of thing. It also helps you generate very strong passwords, which is usually just like a string of a bunch of different characters, so that whenever you go to log into something, you just access your password manager and then copy paste the long ass password it's going to be very difficult for people or machines to crack that that's very important you need to be very aware of what you put on the internet as well any personal information any selfies you post can your address be identified that way is like a window in the back in like the background does that give any kind of identifying information about the area all this kind of stuff you have to be very 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 cognizant about it and i think that is also an extension of self-defense there's a whole lot more that goes into that and you could probably find a variety 
variety of resources on the internet when it comes to that, but I find it very important, especially for queer people, to do these things. Because shit's scary right now, because of the right wing that just loves to project and weaponize the humanity of queer people. So the whole line about how every right winger is calling every person who literally just like is an ally even like even if you're not gay or trans yourself, even if you're an ally to gay, trans, anybody in the LGBTQIA plus spectrum, you are a child groomer, pile, whatever else, you might be asking yourself, why is this the talking point? Well, I'm not going to read this entire thread, but it's a very good one from Squeer underscore. There's been an extreme increase in anti-LGBTQ accounts pushing the hateful attacks equating LGBTQ people with child quote-unquote groomers and pedophiles. While an old attack line has been brought back with alarming speed, the anatomy of a homophobic smear. And there's a whole lot that goes into this. Essentially, it goes over how there's some 4chan involvement noted in neo-Nazi 1488 poster Jack Posobiec also started doing it. James Lindsay has been a big person, this absolutely deranged lunatic, talking about it. James Lindsay put out a false definition that he seems to have invented himself of grooming, which is not the actual definition of it, and strangely enough makes it so that parents can't groom children, even though that does happen and it is reprehensible when it happens. Uh, it seems like James Lindsay is okay with parents doing it, which kind of seems, you know, counter to what he says he believes. But anyway, a whole bunch of stuff here. How it has been brought to this point. There's a lot of QAnon involvement with this as well. You can read this sweet thread as well. I'll link it in the description as well. <clears throat> but... So I've went over how they're trying to do it for votes, right? And I've talked about how it's always been projection. The idea that you accuse the opposition of what you're doing so that the opposition has to defend themselves against your accusation and that works as a smokescreen and deflection against the fact that you're the actual person doing it. And it seems to only become more true and true as time goes on. So the Daily Coast compiled a list of what seems like 600 Republican sexual predators, abusers, and enablers. I'll link to this as well in the uh, description. I'm not going to go through all of these. We've got names like Donald Trump, Roy Moore, Jim Jordan. There's a whole bunch of people. They've set it up in a bunch of different pieces for ad viewership. But if you go to the final page, it goes all the way up to 625 Republicans who have been engaging in these kinds of behaviors that they're claiming the left is doing. This is literally the point. That's all that that is. And it always has has been. This is evidenced by Marjorie Taylor Greene going on a person's show, Matt Gates, another elected congressperson, who is literally being investigated for child trafficking. It could not be more clear than this. In addition to this, you've probably heard of this already. The Idaho House struck down a bill that would have ended child marriage. They voted against it. So Idaho has the highest rate of child marriage in the United States, according to a national report. Under current Idaho law, 16 and 17 year olds just need a parental consent to marry. A child under age 16 can marry if a judge consents also, which is fucking absurd. This is literally child grooming. There is no child that can understand, like, the ramifications of marrying an adult. Like, if these fucking lunatics think that, you know, a child can can't understand basic sociological concepts like the difference between gender and sex and understand their gender identity to contradict their birth sex, they certainly can't understand the ramifications of marrying a fucking adult. Are you insane? But they struck it down. In addition to this, in Tennessee, there's been a new bill that's been introduced by a Republican. Tennessee bill would eliminate age requirements for marriages. Some worry the bill, which would establish common law marriages in the state between quote unquote one man and one woman, endanger marriage equality in Tennessee as well. Tennessee lawmakers this week will vote on a bill seeking to establish common law marriages in the state between quote unquote one man and one woman. Some worry the bill, which has not set an explicit age limit, would effectively legalize all age marriages, while others have said they are concerned the bill would undermine the landmark Supreme Court ruling, which legalized same sex marriage. The bill sponsor state representative Tom Leatherwood, a Republican, has argued that the bill would merely create a new marriage option for Tennessee residents. This is a way to undo the same-sex marriage ruling that the Supreme Court came to in 2015. Like I say, they're gonna come for the trans people. Gay people are not safe. Cis gay people, not safe. Women, not safe. Non-white people, not safe. Black people, not safe. See also abortion fights CRT. It is a fight against everybody, and it starts at the tip of the spear, which is currently, unfortunately, trans people. They are the ones under the highest threat currently because they are the most marginalized, but the spear continues to be pushed through if they can get the point of it through. You have to be against all of this shit. It's an attack on all fronts. Now, at least we can give them a little bit of credit because apparently they filed an amendment to the anti-LGBT marriage bill amid the backlash. So sponsors of the legislation have now added, and, and this is as of April 6, 2022. Sponsors of the legislation have now added amendments specifying a man and a woman seeking the contract must have, quote-unquote, attained the age of majority, which is 18 in Tennessee, though right-wingers, specifically libertarian right-wingers, a big fan about arguing about, you know, the age of consent and how it is dubious and could be lowered. So age of majority, or, or at least the way that that's defined in the legislation, might still allow them some wiggle room to abuse children. Imagine my shock. And, you know, that's a bit unfortunate for people like 
like Tucker Carlson, apparently, who don't seem to have much of a problem with that, or like John Rose, a Tennessee Republican congressman who is quite literally married to his child bride. John Williams Rose, born February 23rd, 1965, is an American politician and businessman serving as the U.S. representative for Tennessee's 6th Congressional District since 2019. A Republican, he was commissioner of agriculture, blah, 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 blah. Engagement announcement. Chelsea Brooke Doss and John Williams Rose are engaged to be married on January 8th, 2011 at First Baptist Church in Cookville. A native of Murfreesboro, she graduated from Eagleville High School in 2007. It continues. Tennessee Governor Phil Bredesen met January 18th with Tennessee Association FFA President Chelsea Doss, President of Tennessee Farm Bureau Lacey Upchurch, and Wife Kay, President of Farmers and Merchants Bank Wayman Hickman, and two members of the Tennessee FFA Foundation Board of Directors Jim Loftus and John Rose. This is how they met. Let's do the math. Representative John Rose, Republican of Tennessee, is 57, married his wife when he was 46, and met her when he was 43. His wife is 33, married him when she was 22, and she met him when she was 18 or 19. A massive age gap, and definitely within the range of some speculation. Kinda gross. Kinda not good. Kinda the pot calling the kettle black a little bit. So, you know, this amendment might make it a little bit difficult. You know, luckily, you know, John Rose has solidified his gains in this way and has been able to get in front of this. But unfortunately, because the Republicans have decided to submit to the pressure of people against the grooming of children, it might be harder for other people like him to do it, potentially. Though, they'll probably find a way. In addition to this, and, and this is just, you know, we could go over the Republican hypocrisy all we want. It's always been projection. If you want to find out what the right wing actually believes, just look at what they're saying the left is doing. You might misfire here and there, but by and large, it seems to line up that those are the things they're actually up to. Uh, but this is also coming at a point where nearly one in five young adults say they're not straight, global survey finds. The survey conducted in 27 countries also found that 4% of those in Generation Z identify as transgender, non-binary, gender non-conforming, or gender fluid. More and more people in Gen Z, more and more adults in Gen Z, are identifying as some flavor of the LGBTQIA plus spectrum. And this is largely because of social progressivism, because these people aren't hurting anybody. They are just they are who they are, they love who they love, and they are who they are. It does not hurt literally anybody, now people are more and more comfortable with coming out and being loud and proud about it, which is a good thing. That's the point of advocacy for the liberation of queer people. But this is not very uh, exciting to right-wingers. The reason for this is because it's an entire new generation of people that are now becoming of voting age that by and large aren't going to be supporting Republicans. They don't like that idea, obviously, because if enough of these people vote, that might pose a problem for the right-wingers when it comes to being able to write laws where they can continue to try to group children. Uh, you know, that's a bit of a threat. The reason why this is the culture war talking point is not only because trans people are some of the most marginalized people and the easiest to use in this way by Republicans, but also because they don't like these high numbers. One of the other reasons why these numbers are so high, in addition to the fact that advocacy for the liberation of queer people makes it so that more people are comfortable with saying, yes, I am not straight on these surveys and being out about it. And because of the fact that general LGBTQIA plus acceptance has gone up, trans acceptance has gone up in the broader population, those numbers are also kind of, you know, maybe not even like the most accurate in terms of like the percentage increase of people identifying this way. Because gay people, queer people have existed since the dawn of time. The reason why numbers are so low in the past is because before all of the gains made by advocates to queer liberation, people weren't comfortable coming out. They were being oppressed and suppressed. They could not say they were gay. They couldn't be out as being gay or anything else or else they might face retribution and violence in addition to everything else that right-wingers want to do to them. So in order to to do this, they are going to try to go back to when it was less safe for people to come out and be out about their identity. This is the idea behind the Florida Don't Say Gay bill. This is the idea behind a variety of anti-trans legislation around the country. They want to scare people and through state mandated abuse, force people back into the closet essentially to make these numbers go down. In addition to this, so this is also very interesting. This is from David Atkins. It says, it sounds ridiculous when you say it out loud, but the actual conservative game plan is to rule with Putin slash Orban style autocracy for two generations, turn schools into right-wing indoctrination zones, crushing millennials and Gen Z underfoot while training up Gen Alpha as fascists. This seems to make a lot of sense. Like, if you're noticing that more and more people in Gen Z, especially adults of voting age, are coming out as queer, and the Republican Party is wholeheartedly and full-throatedly anti-queer, you're likely not going to find a lot of new voters in that 
voting demographic. And unironically, because the right wing is saying, oh, the left is indoctrinating the kids and they're turning them gay or trans by teaching them basic biology and sociology, they're claiming this while this is also one of their goals. The right wing has, since the dawn of fucking time, rewritten history. They whitewashed the civil rights movement. They whitewashed the ills of slavery and all of the disgusting stuff that happened there. A lot of them whitewashed the Holocaust. They whitewash, you know, Columbus's genocide of indigenous people and Native Americans and the rest of the subjugation that indigenous people have been subject to as well. They are literally trying to indoctrinate kids. This is why they try to defund public school as much as they do. This is why they try to push private schools as much as they can and homeschooling as much as they can because there's less oversight from people with actual empathy for their fellow humans who don't want to abuse, groom, and indoctrinate children so that the right wing can indoctrinate children. This is pretty readily apparent if you've got more than two brain cells to rub together. <sighs> but anyway, it's not a good time to be a trans person. Unfortunately, it's not a good time to be anybody in the LGBTQI plus spectrum. It's not a good time to be a woman or a non-white person because the Republicans want to oppress you. They want to see you eradicated from broader society and the methods they use and the way that that turns out in their sicko fantasies can vary from person to person. But overall, the Republican Party, that's their overall goal. It's to return to the past. That's kind of the idea of conservatism. To be a conservative back when slavery was the status quo would be to keep slavery in place. To be a conservative back when women were the property of their husbands and fathers would be to try to keep that in place. To be a conservative in the modern day is to try to go back to those things because advocates for the liberation of marginalized people have been in a lot of ways successful in their endeavors to allow for equality of people in general. They want to undo this. That's the idea. That's conservatism. That's the whole point. And it's, just, it's, a, it's a scary point to be alive, really, you know, and to exist. Uh, but you have to keep keep it on. You have to keep advocating. Like I say before, if you're any flavor of LGBTQI+, or even like a vocal supporter of queer people, self-defense and first aid training, very important. You need to be able to defend yourself against the violence that might happen to you as a result of the right wing's rhetoric. Now, I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but it seems to be the case that when these are the culture war talking points that the right and Republicans are pushing, hate crimes seem to go up in correlation with it. You have to be careful. And this is just general too. Like, even if it wasn't the current moment, being versed in self defense and first aid training still very important literally for everybody you have to be very careful you have to continue to advocate for the liberation of queer people in spite of all of this because we have the correct position we are on the right side of history history books when the right wing continues to lose as they are losing now will say that these people like marjorie taylor green like tucker carlson history will show them as the reprehensible ghouls that they are unless you know right wingers are able to whitewash that history as well which they'll try for sure but to leave on a more positive note, we've got a tweet from a very good account, Aaron in the Morn. This has been a very good account, especially if you want to follow all of the legislation as it pertains to LGBTQIA plus issues. She says, just like the 90s and 2000s, the Republicans limit alienated an entire generation over gay marriage. The 2020 Republicans are doing the same thing over trans people. They can't make trans people disappear or go away as hard as they'll try. These kids are wonderful. Keep on fighting. So hundreds of students file back into the West High School after a walkout today, protesting UTLEG, newly passed transgender athlete ban. Student organizers tell me they want lawmakers to see the impact of the law. And there's a variety of other actions like this going on around the country. And it's very heartening to see. So in the midst of all this negativity, in the midst of all this outright advocacy for violence from the right wing, understand that you have allies, you have people that may not even identify the same way you do, like even like cishet people, right? The straights. We've got allies out there. We've got numbers on our side. LGBTQI plus acceptance rates keep going up. Trans acceptance rates keep going up. All of these things that the right wing is doing is in reaction to the fact that when it comes to social issues, the left has been winning. The fight for the liberation of oppressed peoples, for as long and arduous as that path is, we've got a lot of victories. And we will continue to have them. Just know that you're not alone. This video's con your call out is Cashew Crashed. Thank you so very much for supporting the channel. And I hope you continue to enjoy the videos. If you would like to be the next con your call out, well, all you got to do is follow me on Twitter at ConyourCC. Retweet my video links when they go live. It's the same thing 
every time and now I'm saying every time that it's the same thing. So you're gonna have to get used to that, I suppose. Remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell as well when you do that, make sure you never miss a video. Also leave a like if you'd like, comment something in support of trans people down below and you should do that on literally every video as well, regardless of the topic at hand and have a fantastic day. Trans rights, trans liberation now. Thank you. I am no longer asking.